Hello, Uncle Jim here. One of the greatest ways to make passive income is selling options. I've been making over 200 a day for quite a while. I'm going to share with you the strategies I use to make 200 a day and go into a bit of detail about some of my trades recently. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy what I have for you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I do like to give a quick market update. August has been a pretty rough month. I do believe a lot of it has to do with banking and the fact that Moody's downgraded several of the regional banks. I also think that's probably the reason PayPal's been hit so hard as well as Block or what used to be known as Square. And I think they will recover at some point. You know, with these high interest rates, it's just it's had a pretty major impact. And I do think a lot of the regional banks have a lot of commercial property that's going to be an issue. You know, so I do think because of those issues and the fact that the regional banks are still struggling, I I think the Fed's going to hold steady. I think they're not going to increase rates in September. I'm not sure they're going to increase again for quite a while. They've been threatening that they will, but I think the banking sector is having some tough times. I I think it's going to be a bad idea if they keep increasing. Of course, they're going to do what they want to do. But I'm personally thinking they, they won't do any more increases. Definitely not in September, maybe not in October, maybe November. But even then, it's it's questionable. I also don't think they're going to reduce rates. I think they're going to probably continue with these higher rates for the foreseeable future. They may start decreasing if we get into a true recession, maybe next year, maybe 2024, at least that's that's my thought pro- process. Um, and we're coming to the end of earnings. So August is I, a lot of companies, anyone who, you know, provided negative guidelines or missed earnings, they've been hit hard. I noticed CVS is way down today. And I know a couple of companies didn't report really good earnings. They didn't really miss earnings, but they were also clobbered by the market. And the reverse is true. There's been some companies that have gone way up because of, of good earnings. And we're coming to the end of that. Within another week or two, I think we'll be done with most of the earnings. And I think, you know, at that point, maybe the market will recover a little bit. I, I do think we're going to have this downward trend through the rest of August, probably, and maybe into September. So at least that's my two cents, and it's probably only worth two cents. So, <clears throat> and excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cough. I'm still trying to get over this cold. But I wanted to talk about, for me and the way I trade and the way I teach people who join my memberships, um, is I don't look at look at it like it's like it's gambling. It's truly investing to me. It's picking the right companies. It's you know identifying good quality companies that have make you know they're making money they're doing well they don't have a lot of debt they're paying dividends they're growing dividends if you've listened to my videos i constantly talk about this but this is really key and for me if i run into a scenario where i'm looking at getting assigned which might happen with block block is i think i have a position that's fairly deep in the money i think it's six or seven dollars deep in the money so i very well may get assigned block but i like i like block i think it's going to do well now it, it's not a dividend payer but it it has a lot of applications i i use and that i like and i think long term it's it's going to come back so being able to understand that it's a company i want to own and i probably want to own for a long period of time it makes it easier when you're looking at something that's deep in the money or that may be assigned to you. So that's always key to kind of to start out. And I don't usually play trades just to make money. I don't trade in AMC. I don't trade in companies that don't make money. Um, That's just not who I am. That's not the way I trade. I like to build my portfolio long, long term and grow it. So you might ask, how do I make 200 a day? And why am I making 200 a day? So I kind of set goals and I encourage most people to also set goals. Now, I wouldn't start with with what I'm doing. I would start, I started with a much lower goal, you know, something more of along the lines of maybe $50 a day. I think my first goal was to try to make a thousand a month. And now I'm making closer to to 4,000 a month. And what this allowed to happen is to have early wins. So I was able to meet that thousand dollars 
And then I up my goals, I up my plans, and so on and so on. So my current plan is I do one trade a day or typically one trade a day, and I try to do 200 in each of those trades. And I've been able to do that at the end of the video. I'll actually share one of my planning worksheets, and you'll see the four or five trades I made that week. And then this week, I'm right, I think I have maybe one more trade tomorrow, and I should be again at 200 I think right now I'm at like 199 for the four trades I've done. And if I do another trade tomorrow for 200, then again, it's it's five trades at 200 for this entire week. And that's worked out well for me since this is very part time. I can get on. I can try to find that trade. It may take me 15, 20, 30 minutes to find one of those trades. Sometimes it, I can find something right away and other times it might take me a little, a little bit longer. But I'd be surprised if I'm spending more than 30, 30 minutes each day finding one of those particular trades. What makes it possible is I trade not just in puts, but also calls. So I'll do covered calls. I'll do vertical put credit spreads. I'll do cash secured puts. Now, recently, I've been doing some iron condors. So again, having those three or four types of strategies I've been able to find a trade that I can do on a typical day. Some days it may just be covered calls. Like this week, I think I might have done a covered call. I think I did a covered call, two vertical put credit spreads, and a cash secured put. And I think most of them were rolls. Uh, I'm not sure I had any new trades this week. Now, last week, I believe I had two, two new trades. So that makes it a little bit easier so... The fact that I can some days do covered calls, other days I could do puts, especially like today when the market's down, I believe it's down today. I haven't looked in a couple of hours, but when the market's way down, you could look at making puts and at the same time, you could look at closing some of your covered calls because just the nature of the market being down may mean that some of your covered calls have become very profitable. And the reverse is true when the market's way up and um, you're finding some good premium and cover calls. Well, some of your puts may be very profitable. Your vertical put credit spreads or your cash secured puts. Um, <clears throat> so that, that does make a difference. It makes it a little bit easier for me to find a trade each day. Um, and again, just basic math. I, if I do a trade a day at 200, then that's 1,000 a week and 4,000 a month. And that's what I've been able to do pretty much since I set that goal at the beginning of the year. So every, every year, usually around November, December, I will set new goals depending on how I've done during the year. And that's just for selling options. That doesn't relate to dividends. I also have goals related to my dividends, which right now by the end of the year, I'm trying to get it to 2,000 a month. And I should be able to reach that. I've had some companies recently cut dividends so or lower dividends, so that, that may have impacted me, but a few trades here and there, and I should be able to get to that 2000 of dividends each month. Um, so, And then also what's critical is setting guidelines and strategies. I try to keep things as safe as possible. I've talked about in previous videos that I set a 15 delta for puts and a 20 Delta. Now, it's never exactly a 15 or 20. It may be an 18 delta for a put or a 24 delta for a call. And if you're not familiar with what I mean by delta, it's what's called a Greek, and it's just like a statistical analysis. So <clears throat> a 15 delta is like an 85% chance that that option is going to expire outside the money, meaning it's going to expire worthless and you can just write another one and the same thing with a call so a 20 some odd delta uh, is like a 80 percent probability so I'm taking a little bit more risk with my calls and less risk with my puts and I'm doing that purposely currently with us being kind of in a downward downward trending market we did last month I believe we had an upwards trending I almost got into a bull market or we did get into a bull market and you know, I might have, should have changed some of my covered calls, but I haven't had any issues with covered calls recently. But if we get into a full-blown mar bull market, then I probably will reduce the risk I take with selling calls. I mean, I'll go to a lower delta for calls and a higher delta for puts. Um, and I'm also looking at changing the delta based on whatever type of 
investment or security it is. So <clears throat> taking less risk with, or yeah, less with risk with stocks and maybe a little more risk with ETFs because ETFs don't move as much. They're a little bit easier to deal with um, being that they don't move drastically, you know, and that's not all ETFs, but the ETFs I like, like I like SCHD. Um, I also will do a lot with IWM, which is the Russell 2000. And they do move, but they don't move radically like some of the stocks do. And then, you know, setting that, picking good expirations and good strikes. Because if I identify a stock that I like and I identify a strike that feels good to me, it's what I, a price I want to own that stock at, it just makes it a little bit easier to, you know, deal with being able to do a trade each each and every day. And again, one way I'm also able to do that is by setting up what I call watch lists. And I have a listing of my favorite stocks and my favorite ETFs. And now that I mentioned it, I need to share it again with my membership uh, ships uh, because I've, I've talked about it. I haven't shared it in, I think, a couple of weeks, but I'm probably going to be sharing it in the next day or two. And having that watch list, I can sort it, you know, based on how it's how each stock is doing that day. So if I can look to see who's way down, and then since I'm able to sort it that way, I can see well who's probably got really good premium because if someone's down significantly, you know, we give you an, a, for instance, one of the stocks on my favorite list is CVS. Now if CVS had some news that came out today, and I think they're down or when I looked earlier today, down almost 10%. So just by the nature of being down so much, they typically have really good premium when they're moving that much. So by using that watch list, I can sort it, I can arrange it, I could see what kind of dividends they pay. I can switch to a different view of it to see, you know, what kind of reviews they have or what kind of um, ratios or what kind of um, specific type of, technicals that may be in play. So that becomes also very handy. And, you know, so when I'm looking for that one particular trade, I want to make any, any specific day, I can use those watch lists and, and usually identify it. And then same thing with my ETFs. If IWM is down quite a bit today, then I can always fall back on writing an, an IWN vertical put credit spread or an iron condor I've, like I said, I've also written some iron condors with it, and that can work out really well. So um, that's helped me quite a bit. And then I just wanted to mention one, one other key point here before I jump into the next part of the video where I share the spreadsheet and some of my trades from last week is it, slow and steady is what, what really works. It's, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not... You know, I've heard people talk about, <clears throat> you know, five, six, seven, ten percent monthly returns. And you maybe can do that for a month, but usually the market's going to catch up to you. You're going to have a really rough next month. It's just slow and steady trying to earn, you know, one to two percent is what works for me. I'm usually right around one and a half percent on a monthly basis. And that makes a difference. And that's above and beyond what I make regularly on my account because most of my accounts except for my what I call my IRA with options are fully funded meaning they have ETFs I've invested in they have stocks that I have invested in and that's how I have so many covered calls you know so that's not even including how much those particular securities go up like how much SCHD goes up or you know Coca-Cola goes up or Procter and Gamble just to name a few so just wanted to mention that and then finally What's allowed me also to keep track and, and to help with trying to make 200 per day is having a planning worksheet. And I release my planning worksheet each week, and that's what I'm actually going to share in the next part of the video. And that helps me identify, you know, some great opportunities for rolling or potential opportunities for closing a stock that, you know, is very, very profitable. Or one, I just want to let it expire because it's so far out of the money that it doesn't make sense to roll it. And I share these planning worksheets each week with my membership, usually on Sunday, either mornings or afternoons. And at the top, I've got some of the favorite stocks I'm looking at for that week. Um, and if you're curious about my memberships, details are below. I've had a lot of people joining. 
at some point I am going to limit the more expensive one that I have, or I may change it because, you know, I'm providing a weekly coaching session. It's, it's online. It talks about 15 minutes, but it usually goes to 30 and I may run out of time if I have too many people join. So at some point I'm going to limit how many people can join at that level. And I may create another level. I, I haven't had a whole lot of time to think about that, but I did want to mention that. And that details are always in the description. There's a link to my Patreon if you want to take a look and learn a little bit more. And as always, please subscribe, hit that like button. I'm a growing channel and I really want to get the word out. So I think that's enough about the strategies and how I do it. I'll go into a little more detail when I go over my planning worksheet. So let's jump into the next part and I'll share with you my planning worksheet from last week. Okay, now I've opened up my planning worksheet from last week. At the top of my planning worksheet, I have my favorites. These are stocks that I'm looking at, potentially selling puts, either cash secured puts or vertical put credit spreads. And these aren't necessarily companies I'm going to make trades in, but over the weekend, I like their value. I like where they are. I like the company. So I, I share with my memberships for each week. And this week I had Square Block, which has been hit hard this week. It's down quite a bit. I think it's dropped 10, 15 percent in the last week. Um, I also like Truist. Again, Truist also has been hit hard recently. It, I currently don't have anything in the money because I really like selling uh, puts on them at 25, but it's the bank I deal with. I like them. I think they are going to do well. I think they've been oversold. Citigroup is another one, and I did make a trade in Citigroup this week. Um, it's got strong financials. Pricing-wise, it's at a great price. I currently own 200 shares, so I'm fine with owning more. And then CVS. CVS, um, actually, just today, I think I'd already mentioned that it's dropped big time today. I think it's dropped almost 10% today. So, And I like CVS. They're right down the road from me. I use them when I need to go see a nurse practitioner or if I need to pick up some Gatorade or something else or you know, don't want to go to the grocery store, but just want to go to CVS again, because it's like two, two, two miles away. Um, so that's the, at the top, at the bottom of the spreadsheet, these are the positions that I'm currently managing. So I only had two going into that week. And one is William Sonoma. I didn't end up doing anything with it because it was so far outside the money. This week I did roll it. It, it dropped some this week and it ended up having good premium. So I was able to roll it for, I think, over 200 I think I rolled it for $270. Um, IWM, this is the Russell 2000 ETF. It, this is the Iron Condor I mentioned before. And it's way out of the money. I believe right now it's around 186 187 So it's literally like right in the middle of that Iron Condor. Now, if you don't know what an Iron Condor is, it's what's called a vertical put well, vertical put credit spread paired with a vertical call, vertical call credit spread. And for it, I sold, the shorts I sold were 169 and 207. The farther outs were 159 that I purchased and I purchased the 217 call. And again, it's right in the middle. So it's going to expire way out of the money. Actually, tomorrow it expires tomorrow. So here's the first trade I did. I rolled Qualcomm. And I rolled it from 915, 110, 100. I rolled it out to 119, 24, same strikes, picked up $288. Required capital of 1711 because it's again a vertical put credit spread. And I had a 30, it would be like a 36% return um, if it expires out, outside the money or, you know, if I end up rolling it or closing it. You know, the return maybe it could actually be higher. A lot of times if you if you close it early, you actually end up with a better return because you haven't owned it as many days. So that was on Monday, Tuesday. I did a new vertical put credit spread on IWM, which is the Russell 2000, 171, 161, which is pretty significantly out of the money. At the time, it was at 191. I think it's like 186 currently. And I picked up 189.40 and required capital 1810, just shy of a 38% return. So that was the near 200 trade I did on Tuesday. Wednesday, I did the new vertical put credit spread 
on Citigroup. Uh, that's who I have all my credit cards with, 40, 30, 22 Delta. So a little bit of a higher Delta than typical, but at $40, City is, that's really inexpensive for City. So, and I currently own 200, would not mind owning 200 more. I picked up 167.40. So I didn't get that 200, but again, when you average everything out, it ends up being more than two, $200 on a daily basis. And that's like a 26% return. So a little harder to get the higher return for some some a company like Citigroup, but not bad. 26% return is still really good. So I did that Wednesday, Thursday, I did a Coca-Cola roll. And this is a cover call. And it the strike price was 67.50 expiring 119.24. And what I did is I kept the same strike price and just moved it out six months. And I believe that was two contracts. Yeah, two contracts. And I picked up just shy of $200, 197.40. Now the cost basis of these Coca-Cola shares, because I got them when I was a teenager, I think I was 16 or 17, is so low. And that's why the return is 32%. I mean, if you base it on the full value of Coca-Cola, it'd be just above the dividend amount. But um, again, at, with Coca-Cola, I, I will sell those and roll them around. And I haven't had anything get assigned away from me for many years. I think it's maybe 2020 or 2021 I was the last time I had any Coke assigned away from me. And I did that on Thursday. And on Friday, I rolled uh, BBY, which is Best Buy, and I rolled it from 9 15 23 70 60 um this was the original delta but i kept i kept the strikes and i believe it's still currently right around 79 that's not the current price is actually 79 not 69 but i brought in 20280 the required capital was 1797 and i had a 32 percent return which is which is good. And Best Buy's worked out really well for me too. It, it's uh, been a good company to sell options with. So the total that I did was 1,045, which if you divide that by five, that's what 2010 or 208 on average for each trade. And you saw here, I did literally a different trade every day. And, you know, if I was just doing the trades and I wasn't working with this channel and sharing this information with my memberships, I probably could get on and off fairly quickly. Um, I think I spent maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Like I did this, I did a trade this morning, but I haven't been back on the market. I've been working on this video and doing other things that I need to do. But here you can see at the top, I have my goal. So a thousand weekly, 4,000 monthly. This I don't think was updated. <clears throat> I think it's more like, Yeah, I don't think that value is correct. I'll have to check on that. I think it's it's not including this correctly. So I believe that's 1686. Yeah, that's supposed to be 1686. So um, I'll have to check on that. So that, that's it. This is my planning worksheet. This is, you know, it's similar this week, again, every day. And this is Thursday, so I've done four trades this week. I think I'm averaging just slightly under 200 for each trade. And if I do something right around 200 again tomorrow, I'm again this week. And that's what I found pretty much all week. I've, not all week, all year. I've been able to reach these goals 1,000 weekly and 4,000 monthly and it's worked out quite well. So, so that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you guys. As always, please, if you do something different or you have a different strategy or you do it differently, please let me know. I'm, I really enjoy it when people share, you know, what they're doing and how it's different from what I'm doing. And I typically answer most of my comments. So please add a comment below. I'd really like to hear from you. So thanks for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful evening.